Brother, I want to minister from Isaiah 9, 6. This morning, as Sister Tasha said, his name shall be called Wonderful. This is more so in, uh, in our neck of the woods than it is in eastern countries. When people give names to their children, it can be quite arbitrary. It may have nothing at all to do with the meaning of the name whatsoever. It may just simply be because they like the sound of it. And that's kind of where my name came about. But then there are those that, uh, like Brother Aaron, or, or Brother Jeremy and Sister Nikki, you give a name to your child, Journey, because you expect that he will come to the knowledge of Christ Jesus and then be on his journey out of this life. But even then, see, what you've done is you do this in anticipation of what you hope he will become, but, but we, we don't know. We don't know. When it comes to his name shall be called Wonderful. Jesus has been given a name that perfectly suits exactly what he has become, and it has been given by Isaiah hundreds of years before he even made the fame out of that name. His name shall be called. I looked this up. There, there are a lot of good uh, uses of the word called. One is to accost. I know that could be in a bad sense. The idea is to bring somebody into a bold account. But just think of the bold part of it. His name shall be wonderful. To call out to, to cry unto. This is the Lord. It also carries the idea of being famous. Jesus has made the name what it is. It isn't that Jesus said, now you call me wonderful. No, his name shall be called wonderful. Famous. To proclaim, well, we think you're wonderful. We're not really sure. His name shall be called Wonderful. It gives the idea of renown. It's not that Jesus is famous in just one quadrant of the world. The fame of his wonder, the fame of his wonder has gone out to the utter ends of the earth. He's wonderful. His name shall be called. The idea is that men would come to see Christ for who he is because of what he would do. And thus they would say, you're wonderful. His name shall be called wonderful. Consider that word, wonderful. is the idea of a miracle. You don't say of things that are, well, so-and-so breathes so wonderfully. That's just wonderful the way they drive. That's just... We do not ascribe wonder to something that is common or ordinary. It is to that which is miraculous. It is the idea of a marvelous thing. The root of that word wonder in the Webster, Webster means to be filled with awe. The cause of admiration. No wonder David wanted to stay in the courts of the Lord. He saw God. That's why. Feeling of amazement. Reverent admiration. That's what we talked about this morning, the fear of God. Because you see how great he is, how grand he is. He's all powerful. He's all wise. Some other words for wonderful are like excellent. Christ, he's excellent. He's excellent. No flaws whatsoever. There's no shadow of turning in him. Grand or marvelous, extraordinary. The Hebrew word of wonderful, just to kind of bring this down to what I'm going to say this morning. The Hebrew root of the word wonderful means to separate or distinguish. And by implication of that, he is considered great. It's kind of like Saul. When he was anointed king, the scripture says that he was head and shoulders above everybody. And that's the idea of Christ. When we say that Christ is wonderful, we mean that Christ has done and is what no man has done or can do. And don't just limit yourself to the human race. Even in heaven, Jesus is wonderful. No angel has done what Jesus has done. See, in that sense, brethren, Jesus is wonderful. Now, just rehearse this a little bit. Think of this. Even at Jesus' birth, see, men are probably at their most 
One of the most humbling conditions we find ourselves in is at our birth. This is the time when we know the least. We have to rely totally upon someone else to help us. It's like a time of, of great humility. And yet, even at Jesus' birth, he's wonderful. We see things happening in Christ's behalf that has never happened to anybody. I mean, brother, and I didn't have anybody have a star in some other state that was guiding them to my birth, but Jesus did. And as God has said, let all the angels of God worship him. He didn't tell them to do that at my birth, but he did at Jesus. And also this, every other man born, that was his beginning point, but not our Savior. According to Hebrews 7, he hath neither beginning of days nor end of life, but abideth forever. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And all the worlds were framed at His Word. This is the babe in the manger. And He's wonderful. Think of Him in His life, particularly as it relates to His miracles. Who among us has been able to chart the court of the... the, the uh, Swimming of a fish, put a coin in its mouth, and then make sure it gets to Peter. No great holy prophet did that, but Jesus did. How about healing a blind man that was born blind? Blind man, boy, he gave a great rebuke. What a marvelous and sound. And he silenced the talk of foolish men. He said... It has never been heard since the beginning of the world that a man opened the eyes of him that was born blind. What is that telling you? It's telling you that Jesus is wonderful. Amen. He's wonderful, brethren. Now let's just look at salvation. Look at how wonderful he is because that's like the point of wonderful. It's not just that he can multiply bread on earth, raise people back from the dead, give a son back to his mother. No, those are telling you about some greater thing, something that he's done in the work of salvation. What makes him so wonderful there? Well, think about this. He laid down his life at will, and he took it up at will. The two proponents of the gospel, these are pillars upon which our faith rests. He died and was buried and raised, and all of it he did at will. <coughs> at will. He came up when he decided to come up. This commandment he gave his father, just like you're given a commandment. Set your affection on things above. Here's the commandment Jesus received. Lay your life down and take it up again. He did it. See, he's wonderful. Who could be a mediator like Jesus has been? There is one mediator and only one because there's only one that can do it between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Who can be so perfectly righteous that he can be received by a thrice holy God that can't wink at sin, but at the same time can empathize with the feeling of our infirmities. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Humanity might in some sense be able to empathize, but when he tries to enter the courts of heaven, God's going to say, who told you to tread my courts? This is a place where people that are perfectly holy and have not lifted up their soul unto violence and vanity, only they can enter in here. You've got no business being here. And an angel who can be there because he's holy, he says of his angels, they're holy angels. They're holy. But brethren, if the intercession of angels was required to, so to speak, keep your head above water, you die the first day. They couldn't empathize with your weakness. They can't sympathize with that. They could destroy men in their weakness without a twinge of conscience whatsoever. It couldn't be an angel. What does that make Jesus? The only one who could really be a mediator between God and man. You see, he's wonderful. His name shall be wonderful. Well, I know this isn't a sermon. I'll tell you, this... This could be one. This is an excellent consideration. Mm -hmm. Let me just tell you what, what this comes down to. We have an opportunity today. This is a high day. Not every day is alike, and this is a high day. And Jesus has said, where two or three are gathered in my name, 
There am I in the midst of them. But you're going to get today, you're going to receive from the Lord according to the measure of your faith. And part of your faith is your expectation. How high is your expectation this morning, my brothers and sisters? How high is it? Well, I'll tell you this. If you can see Jesus for who he is, and I know you have, so I'm just talking as one that's among you, and I've seen this happen for myself, you've seen it happen for you. If you can see Jesus for who he is, you will never have an expectation toward him that will disappoint God. It will be a high expectation. So let's consider Jesus today and come with great expectations, because this is one that can do, brethren, without measure and limit, above and beyond what we could even think or imagine. This is Jesus, and his name is wonderful. Amen.